So today we're talking about the OG Airtable clone. Oh, I mean, competitor, call them whatever you want. But ultimately, we're talking about Stackby. They've been around since God knows how long. I think since 2018, with a product being launched somewhere around like late 2019, early 2020. So yeah, they've been around for a very long time and I feel like they've stood the test of time to be their own thing. And as you're gonna see, yeah, they're kind of proud of that. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get started. Oh, well, actually, wait. If you're new, hi, my name is Alex, and here on this channel, we talk about anything and everything low code, databases, Airtable, AI, automation, you freaking name it. We've probably done it by now. But anyway, bottom line is, let's get started with this Stack B first impressions review. Okay, first and foremost, let's start with the website and the builder interface experience, you know, the initial stuff. So on the website, generally speaking, I mean, it's kind of okay. There's not much going on. I'm just refreshing it now. You get the occasional like scare tactic, oh, price increases soon, our limited time offer, you know, that sort of thing. So they are trying to get clients to, to subscribe for sure. This is a little bit weird. It's kind of like too close to the header. You know, I'm just nitpicking, but you know, trusted by 30,000 companies. I remember back in the day it was probably trusted by zero companies, but it's nice to see how far they've come. It's okay. They're mainly focusing on the UI. They're not over promising too much. It's kind of, you know, vanilla, nothing really spectacular. Bring data from your favorite sources, templates, you know, all well and good. Nothing to call home about. Let's now dive in into how the builder looks and works and that sort of thing. So here we are, I've just logged in and you do get some of these like weird little bars that come up. This one I can't even get rid of. So yeah, whatever. I think the like workspace interface just lacks a little bit of finesse. You've got a font here, you've got a font there, you've got some weird buttons here. Why do I care about a new form? I'm not even inside of this. Like, it's okay, but like I said, lacks a little bit of finesse, but overall, it's not too bad. Now, if I open up a database, you can kind of see that it is pretty much exactly like Airtable to the T. I have a feeling they are literally copying the CSS as is, it is super reminiscent of how Airtable used to look maybe three years ago, kind of squarish. You know, you've got your views that are searchable. Thank God your tables are up here at the top. Now, I've also kind of noticed that they are changing the terminology. So what we know as a base in a variety of other platforms, they call a stack. I think a field is a column and a record is a row. So very spreadsheety, but tables are tables. Like if you want to create a new table, that's a table. So they're trying to, you know, instill a little bit of their own terminology. So that kind of has a sticky factor to it. Anything else in terms of the UI UX? No, not really. Very, very similar in all respects compared to Airtable. We have some of our apps over here, which is kind of like uh, Airtable's extensions, very similar. So let's now dive in and actually build something and see what that's like. So as this has been very much modeled after Airtable, clearly, and not only that, it has been around for a number of years. In other words, it definitely is supported by real buying customers. The experience is okay. It's great. I mean, generally speaking, if you look at it from a perspective of a spreadsheet experience, Every single function is there. You can multi-select multiple fields and cells. Right-click function it gives us a bunch of different things. You can create tables very quickly. You can import data in order to create them. Like everything you know and love about Airtable, if you know and love Airtable, is here. But yeah, with a few interesting features. Now, I feel like my favorite feature from pretty much the whole system is a kind of a niche one. So let's jump into a record and 
we have this little show comments and history. And look at that, we have comments, very much like in Airtable and Smart Suite and all of that. History, so you can see when it was all edited. And then look at that, we have create a checklist about this record. How cool is that? You can also create a reminder for this record. What an amazing idea. Like, who thought of this? Honestly, give this guy a cookie. We usually charge for this kind of thing to our clients, yet here it's all kind of pre-baked. Although, I mean, I haven't really super duper tested this, but just the mere thought that it's there, amazing. Love it. Now, talking about the detail view, there are a few interesting quirks. So for instance, you can have it in a two-way column layout, which kind of expands it. If it's single column, it looks more like a form. But yeah, in two-way column, you can take some fields and you can drag and drop them. And if they are 50-50, they will kind of snap next to each other, which is really nice. But the problem is that you can't really, I mean, I can tell where it's going to go, but you can't control the size. So for instance, I can't take up the full length. I can't add any dividers between this. So I can't really customize it just like I typically can within Smart Suite, which is one of the features I absolutely love about Smart Suite. It's not too bad. It's cool. I like it. Now let's try and create a new table. And for this, I'm just gonna jump in here and create a new table. Let's call this customers and let's add John Doe and linking tables to each other works flawlessly works really well lately i've kind of had like a bad streak of systems that i've been trying all of which kind of thought at linking records to each other which is one of the most basic reasons why you would get a low code database it's because you want to create relationships and you want to see things from both perspectives from record a's perspective that is linked to record b and vice versa. So this works really nicely here. So let's link customers to orders. And all I have to do is just create a new column, call this orders, link to another row, orders, allow linking multiple rows. Yes, an, a client can have multiple orders and that's it, create column. Now, if I take one of my orders and link it, save, I can then jump back into that order and you should see that it's linked back to the customer. Not only that, I can also click on said customer and I can see their details. How simply obvious is that? Well, I guess not to a lot of other similar platforms, but at least for Stackby, they've done this right. Now, what I wish they had done a little bit better is that if you are linking something that we could get that table.io experience where you kind of get the whole table, and it's really reminiscent of good old ER ERPs that, you know, when you try to link something to something else within the ERP, you typically get like a full table of that other place where you're linking a record from and not just this sort of like, I don't even know what to call this view. Yeah, this sort of way. So essentially the experience of using the builder is actually quite straightforward nothing else to say about this love it now let's move on to the next section which is uh, dealing with views and see what that's like all right views one of the most critical pieces of low code database ux ui design what we have here in stack b is kind of straightforward you have a grid view you have kanban calendar form update form and gallery and section yes so 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 good that we have the ability to section out the views so i can drag and drop my views into like little folders now my favorite thing about their views is the update form we're going to talk about it in a split sec but generally speaking not much to talk about there is a form builder so let's jump into that i've got some forms here that I've kind of pre-made earlier. The great thing about this is that it works exactly like Airtable's forms work, but nothing more, nothing less, which is good and bad. Good considering how bad all the other form builders were in our latest series of first impression videos, but generally it's workable. Like I could use this occasionally. Why could I use it? Because I have the ability to mark things as required. And I also have the ability to make certain fields be shown only when the conditions are met. Big thumbs up. 
great. Now, let's talk about the update form. And initially, I just couldn't really get it. But the moment you do, you're like, wow, why doesn't Airtable do something like this? So now I've opened this form and I just couldn't really understand what's going on. Why is this different than regular form? And only until I opened up this little panel here on the side where I can choose a record and I can actually update it right here. So I can say product one test, for instance, press update. And if I go back to my grid view, how cool is that? Right? So yeah, that's basically it. Now there's no fancy views like a Gantt chart or a timeline view. I wish they had something like that because they are doing calendar views. Come on, you can kind of like evolve that into a Gantt view. But yeah, sadly, it's not there. Now let's move on to the next section. All right. So now let's take a look at what Stack B is offering in terms of field types. So let's go ahead and add a column. This is very much like the experience that we get with Airtable. None of that side panel thing that we've seen recently with some other solutions. Types of columns, link another row, connect to an API service. Let's get this one out of the way. So I've done a little bit of research about what this does. And it's a little bit great, but difficult to do. What it does is essentially pulls data from some kind of other API service that you can also link to your leftmost field. So let's say I'm saying line item one here, I can link this up to my Shopify. And because some other field in my Shopify list of products is called line item one, I can then pull some data via the API into StackB. Great idea. I don't know, a little bit awkward. I don't know if it's low code or not. Good idea, but I feel like it's a little bit long winded to, to kind of like deal with this. So other than that field, we have all the rest of the greatest hits of fields that you would expect. Nothing really new other than the push message. What I'm interested in is the formula field. Now, I've tested this and I must admit that this is the most frustrating thing I've experienced in a very, very long time. I was ready to tear a napkin in half from the frustration. Let me show you what I mean. So let's just take, for instance, a simple formula, right? We want to multiply quantity by item price. So the way that this works is that you have to start typing quantity and then you have to actually press arrow down and now you can tab to apply it. Then if I press star, I can add multiplication. But then let's say I want to start typing item price. My initial reaction is to press enter, right? But I have to press tab to apply this. I press tab that then forces me to clear the item name. And now I have to press enter again, right? To save this. Updated time? What? So now I have to go back and do this again. Formula. Item. Tab. Clear that thing from the back. There we go. Multiplied by quantity. Select that with a mouse and then create column. Of course, you can like set the number to be a currency, the precision, very nice, create column. But can you imagine if you just by accident, you've been like writing this complex nested if or something, and then you just by accident press enter instead of like using your mouse and pressing create. I would be so pissed off. Now, in terms of the amount of functions that you get, there's quite a few of them. The one thing that's kind of missing is any kind of function about arrays. Airtable has got a function for arrays. This doesn't. I wish they had something like a select function where I can bring one field from somewhere else, kind of like in a SQL-esque sort of style like we do in AppSheet, for instance. But no such thing. So yeah, that's it in terms of the fields that you can find in StackB. Let's now go into the next section, which deals with automations, AI and such. Now the picture gets a little bit fuzzy when it comes to automations within StackB. So 
let me show you what's there and you can make your own conclusions as to how helpful this is. So there's no pre-baked onboard automation platform like we have in SmartSuite or Airtable. What we do have is this sort of like weird thing that they call power-ups. There's also integrations, but let's just discuss power-ups for a sec. In order to get there, you have to go into like your little account symbol here and then integrations and then power-ups. So power-ups do things, but they are more like pre-baked automations done by Stackbeat for you to use. They are not really allowing you to forge them to your own liking. You have some conditions that you can set, but that's just about it. Integrations, that kind of speaks for itself. You can integrate various other external services to stack B. That's it. There's no real pre-baked AI functionality. I mean, can I blame them? Yes and no. It's a nice thing to have. If you've been around for such a long time, you should have the capacity to implement something. But I guess, you know, no harm, no foul if you haven't got anything ready yet. In conclusion, the OG Airtable clone doesn't really disappoint. If their formula field was just a little bit better, I would be even happier. Now, there's a few things obviously that I would like to see. Number one, an automation platform that's on board Stackbee. Just like we have in SmartSuite and Airtable, I don't want to be asking Zapier or Make just because I want to copy paste this value from this field to that field. Next, I would want a Gantt chart. If you can do a calendar, chances are you can do a Gantt chart. So guys, please keep up. <laughs> we need a Gantt chart. Obviously, please make the formula field better. Please make it better. It needs to be revamped. In conclusion, I think the final thing on my wish list for Stack B would be something like an even better experience with forms. Maybe something like card view of a form where I every single question is its own little card and in the style of type form or even jot forms, you know, new style. I can see each question one at a time. I mean, dynamically filterable drop downs on a form would be amazing, but I'm, you know, this is just wishful thing thinking at this point. Now, finally, I'm really rooting for these guys. They've been around for so long and they really deserve the success that they've gotten, but they have to kind of like keep up. This is 2024 now and the competition is getting fiercer and fiercer and fiercer in terms of UX, UI. You can't be relying on Airtable to just giving you all the cues in terms of how your design language should work. Now, talking about other Airtable inspired systems, check out my review of SmartSuite. That is, I feel like one of those platforms that did this right and now they're forging their own very very clear path uh so much so that you know some people just switch from Airtable to a smart suite i've rarely seen them go the other way around but definitely a platform worth checking out so yeah that's it for me thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one cheers